Where are we going? Mm -hmm. Five seconds. Hey, hey, welcome to the program. I am your host. I'm attorney Stephen Lee. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't put my thumbnail up, which comes for you. There's so much to do there, Lucas. Lucas is our uh, producer here today, so thanks so much for joining us, Lucas. Our guest today, a guy I've been trying to get on for many years. And the reason why I want uh, this gentleman on the show is because because he's a, he's one of the good guys, right? He's out there fight, fighting a good fight. You do for, for, for people against the government. I love that. Just like me. <laughs> I love that. So uh, and we have today, his name is Attorney John Foran. Got a little applause for you. You can't hear it though. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for having me, Steve. Uh, again, I've, been, I've really been wanting to have you. First, again, for those reasons, but also because you do a, an area of the law that like nobody really understands. Right. And um, I've never had an eminent domain attorney on. Tell people what that is. Yeah, eminent domain is, is an area of the law in the real estate where um, it's governed by the Fifth Amendment. Um, and the government cannot take your property uh, for uh, public use without just compensation. So all of the projects that you see over the course of the years like and highways and tollways, schools, many, many forest preserve districts, park districts, those are all public land. And at one time we were private. And the government came along and uh, filed a condemnation case, and people fought in court in order to get their just compensation. Thankfully so. Absolutely. You know, uh, last week, I think last summer I went to. Um, Going to uh, the uh, Yellowstone, and as you come out of Yellowstone, you go into Grand Teton. Right? And I'm, this is the most beautiful land. And then I read the history that they took that land away from people. I'm sure they did. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, this this is the most beautiful land in the world. Who would give this up? And of course, they wouldn't, you know, right. unless the government would come and take it away from them. Right. And it's the same thing with state, all the state parks in the state of Illinois. You know, those are all private land. Now, uh, I don't want to get too much into the news, but there's a big, there's a big uh, recent Supreme Court, recent Supreme Court case that, that kind of changed things around. Yeah, yeah. About the Kilo? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Suzette Kilo, an elderly lady who owned uh, a New London Connecticut, uh, was taken for a public purpose, but it was actually uh, a private purpose. The city of New London had uh, come up with a redevelopment plan, which involved uh, you know, acquiring a bunch of private property in order for private developers to build all sorts of flats and things. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, there was a big fight with all, all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said that economic redevelopment, in effect, um, was a public use. Now, I can see that that's good for you because that just means more taking. What's, what's your thoughts on that? Thing? Well, you know, the, the state of Illinois uh, proceeds along those lines based on the TIF district, the tax and community financing districts. And, you know, the problem I think with the TIF app is that it's just so broad. They, they, they have to designate a certain area of property as either blighted or a conservation area because it's not performing at a high enough level, level to. You generate a real estate tax base sufficient to fund all the government operations. So the government brings in consultants and they analyze all of the properties in a particular area. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a relatively short hurdle to clear in order to designate an area as uh, a conservation area. So I think in Illinois in particular, the I saw that with opportunity zones. You know, when you said designating uh, opportunity zones, uh, that seemed to be politically beneficial for some people. It, it, it tends to be, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've run across that a few times. <laughs> no, I, I want 
we'll talk more about, about what you do because I think it's so interesting. And, and again, you know, you're out there fighting for people that the government's taking their stuff away. Right? And, you're fighting for them. And, and I want to talk a little bit more about that. But first, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about yourself. You know, I know I have a kind of a leg up on everybody because I know a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. but I've known you a long time now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we our, our families are tangentially related. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but tell me a little bit about yourself and you know, you know where you grew up and you know, where did you go to school and things like that. Sure, I, I grew up here in, in Chicago and uh, we, uh, I live now in the north, north side. Uh, but yeah, I, I spent my whole life here and I went to the Royal Academy and uh, played sports and eventually uh, went out east for school. I, I know the much about that. So you guys say we look at school. What? Yes. I don't know. I always used to say we went to small, small college in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say, no, they can't do that. Because we don't, I went to a small school in in Evanston. But it won't, wasn't Northwestern. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those islands. <laughs> okay. But I, 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 I uh, don't know why you can hesitate. Because that's, that's, a, that's quite an accomplishment. It was, it was interesting in the 1970s. I'm sure that's true. Very interesting. A lot of similarities between that and that. But the reason why I like to talk about that is because I like to find out what, was, was practicing law something that you always wanted to do, or is that something that, that you just kind of fell into? Talk a little bit about that. Well, my, my dad was a lawyer, and uh, he, he had very active practice and very active public life. Um, he was actually the eminent domain Special Assistant Corporation Council in charge of land acquisition. So uh, I kind of grew up with uh, Aaron Turner, and uh, he eventually became the U.S. Attorney for uh, the Northern District of Delaware. And uh, he was rather famous for his certain trial called the Spears and Seven Trial. Yes, he was. Uh, and I was uh, so I, I lived through all that. It was fascinating times, and I really learned to be in a question. Eventually, after he retired from service, uh, from public service, he uh, was a law firm. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he continued somewhat the enemy from there. Um, and also, you know, civil law as well. But, uh, and, you know, he was a great example. Yeah, so, so, did you always know that you were going to do I thought I, I probably did. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, have, I know your sister, and I know your sister is a, and an attorney also. <laughs> and, uh, and she's made quite a name for herself, too. Uh, she has. Yeah, she's an amazing person. She is, yes. Yeah. She, she, uh, she was general counsel for the Vienna and the child agency, John Bacon Agency. She was general counsel for the Senate of the Missing and Spirit Children. Um, and I know she still does a lot of work. She's a warrior. Yeah, she is. Uh, I'm not we won't go into too much about that. But I I think the world of your sister as I think the world of you and I'm so happy that you're here with, with uh, on the show. But okay, so and you know this I, I kind of let this out, but you know I have two sons and uh, both of my sons are in law school and uh, I always like to ask our guests, uh, attorneys, what kind of advice would you have? For either kids in law school, kids thinking to go to law school, people getting out, they're not always kids, but then I wasn't when I got out of school. Out of law school. But, and getting out of school, what kind of advice would you have for them? Well, I, I, I think really there's no substitute for hard work. And um, along with the academic aspect of law school, which is, which you <laughs> and I both know, it's really. I think it's important for a kid to really you know, have some experience uh, you know, during the summer, the internships, um, you know, actually get into a courtroom, you know, really get into a department and you know, see how you know, public service actually happens on the ground. You know, and, uh, 
And I think that will help them decide the direction to follow. You know, once they do, and if they have education, that's the bottom. Now, you, you, you kind of already alluded to this, so you know, I always like to talk about um, our attorney's first job out of law school. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned that your father was uh, in the same line of work that you're in. Is that what you started in? Did you, did you venture off into something else? Did you? I did. I started off with him. Uh, we worked with him for uh, about five, six years. And uh, then I decided to go off on my own, start my own practice. A lot of people. And uh, I'm very fortunate to have found a couple of partners uh, to, to share my passion for me and my partner, too. Bumping each other at the same time, he said, Let's start our own shop. And then a few years later, uh, Stephen Burke, like his father was a legendary editor in Chicago. He enjoyed this. I'm just very fortunate to have that. And we've got a great crowd with him in the cinema, Tony, who puts up with us all the three of us on a daily basis. Couldn't be afraid of that. But, you know, I, and I, I didn't I didn't ask for what was going to be I went here, I went at night. Uh, I went at night, Northwestern, and then I stayed from the uh, to uh, the Alpine University of uh, uh, Chicago. Uh, the, 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 well, that's where I went. I told my kids to go. Uh, whenever I called them, I said, they called them to task. Uh, of course. <laughs> as, as, uh, my oldest is. I wouldn't have gone there if it was still John Marshall. I would have gone to state school. <laughs> I think it's full of my paper. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I like to talk about, about your first, you know, when you first get out of law school or, or actually when you first start your own practice. Because you know, starting your own practice is not, not an easy thing. Right? You know? uh, in your line of work, how do you find, how do you find business? Uh, how does that work? Well, I, you know, I was fortunate that, um, you know, I, I had a, my father's name, you know, he was certainly mm -hmm. helpful in this area. Um, and, but, you know, I, I would follow the project, you know, these big public projects. And, uh, you know, I would you know, send out mailings, you know, and the rules. You know. And, you know, once you get one person in the project, uh, you know, it, 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 people talk and grow and, and get other opportunities to. You know, we, we've shared some clients in the past yeah. uh, it, about, you know, and it, that you help in this. And I can because, like, some of the government does stuff, and I can go say, we're taking your property back. What do you do? <laughs> you know, right. you know, but where do you go from there? You know, uh, and it's, it's intimidating. You know, it's, it's, it's really daunting. But, um, you know, people very often do stuff. You know, they'll fold after you know, a few weeks and just say, yeah, I'll take whatever you want and I'll negotiate, you know, small increase and, uh, and you know, they just accept it. I even consult in the That's like the, the ultimate thing for Goliath, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And of course, you know, they, they don't, once they sit down and explain the situation, you know, they're you know, entitled to negotiate and they're entitled to get an appraisal. And it's, and it's, and it's whoever the condemning body is, they have to meet certain standards. So we have to be afforded with you. They have to do something necessary. They have to, have to negotiate with you. It has to be a public person. It's a public duty. So, you know. Broadly uh, speaking. Yeah, broadly <laughs> speaking. And, you know, upon occasion, we challenge the government uh, and been successful in defeating them. It doesn't have the statutory requirement. And that's a daunting task also for the attorneys going against the government attorneys with unlimited uh, budget. Yes, it is. It is. Um, unfortunately, in the state session, uh, if, if in fact you defeat people, um, the case is dismissed. You can put in the petition for things in the ground. That's powerful. Yeah, that's scary. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, again, I think when people are in trouble, um, they're reluctant to hire a lawyer because you know, of all the bad press that plays. But again, you've got guys like yourself out there that fight for, for people to get to just what's, what the law provides. You know, this it, it, 
there's a lot of folks out there that need representation. In eminent domain, on any given project, we can have everything from the residential uh, swaths of properties in the area, industrial properties, commercial and retail properties. Um, and so it's a broad, uh, you know, a broad sampling of the economy and the real estate market. And of course, we have to value each one of those properties according to what the highest and best use is. Which is a real benefit. A lot of people don't realize that it's not necessarily the present use that determines what the valuation is, it's the highest and best use. If somebody's got a, a, a vacant piece of property, for example, I mean, a lot of resident, uh, farmland, you know, that sort of thing. And if it's surrounded by some development, well, then it's not necessarily, a lot of times, it's the condemning body will come in and value it as. Farmland, which is low into the market. But if you can prove that you know, the highest and best use you know, is in the redevelopment of the, the higher value, commercial use, uh, industrial use, then, then you can use comparable sales too. But it's based on that. Now, this is why I like to do so. Because I learned so much from some people like yourself that were too familiar with this, is what they do. And then, like, I didn't know that. And, uh, and I like to think I'm informed, but not that much. So that's why I love to I love to have people like yourself in front and, and ask them about their work and find out about it. You know, uh, and I think when people, because people don't know that what right, you just said, and so we, and they'll remember that. But if it ever comes their turn and the government's knocking on their door, they go, "Oh, you know, that's I don't have to give them what they're asking for." Right? right. What they're offering. Right. You never, know, you never write the right words. Own analysis, and then you have the right to get your own appraiser and you know, attorney, of course. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, you can even get even the other experts, you know, engineer, who's you know, uh, property is uh, you know, very complex, and you have land plans involved. And, and, you know. Now, I, I did ask you this question before, but I want to ask it again because I think you know, it's too late. You know, like some of us ask him about trials. Uh, and I didn't know the answer to that. Talk a little bit about that. Because mm -hmm. some of these times, sometimes this goes to trial. It does, right? It's, it's a Fifth Amendment right. You have a right to a jury trial. And uh, we've tried a lot of cases over the years. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Do you do the litigation? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And I would say. You know, a good percentage of our cases end up in, you know, in file cases. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's really a battle of the experts. It's, not anybody has theirs, and we have ours. And, uh, you know, put on your case. Is there a jury trial? Mm -hmm. jury trial, yeah, absolutely. I, I would think, not being a really little bit myself, but I think that's kind of the, the way of your favor. Would you think or not? I would say I would say that there's uh, I would say the jurors are often sympathetic, you know, the property owners. Uh, if you pick a jury, you know that uh, you know you, you never you never know who you're going to get on with. I would say so. It's, it's that's an art, um, but uh, it's it's very challenging and uh, it's very satisfying. Yeah, well, that is a, that's an amazing thing. Yeah, it is an amazing thing. You know? uh, again, goes back to helping people. Right? If you don't want to go to trial, but man, if you, you got to be able to fight in, in the courtroom. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, you know, we've got a lot of interest in trials. A lot of times, you know, these condemning bodies are coming into areas that are in transition economically. And, you know, for example, South Loop, uh, the, the long time known as an industrial area. And then, you know, eventually, those buildings and properties reached the end of their economic life, and they were trying to redevelop um, For example, the, uh, the 
the purity and the performances of Indian is expanding the huge project of putting new in may take in quite a bunch of the best old investment properties. And so things uh, face some challenges too. Some type of challenge. I worked a lot down in the corner place when it, when when they just had the corner place. Mm -hmm. And then the South Building. Right. And then the North Building, and now it's just a, it took over that whole area. They, right. they gobbled it all up. Right. And we were involved in all those expansions. And that was very instrumental in developing the South Loop. Because the South Loop from the you know, Roosevelt to the Sermon was really uh, you know, a non developing area. And then the idea of the really came from the city of Chicago and planning. Um, you know, saw the potential for expanding the corner place and really attracting, uh, you know, attracting conventions every year and all the hot food and all that. Because now, when I drive down uh, Lakeshore Drive, uh, past all the development, the beautiful residential development, from Sunat over to Roosevelt, it's just a lot of It really is a lot of it, it, it was very light at the area. Um, Seemed like that's not too much travel to work. They were not a bad one. I'm here for every time. I'm sure you did. Because, uh, of course, I was, again, I worked at the farm today, so there was a lot of, there was a lot of, some, some, uh, there were talents. Yeah. So, that's my yeah. favorite. Place. You knew the neighborhood. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. Well, right there by, uh, what, what, is that the Lexington Hotel? Or what was that? It was the Hotel Roosevelt. No, the, uh, El Capone's Hotel. Oh, El Capone's, yeah. I forget what that was. I think Lexington. it might have been the election. Right there on uh, Michigan Avenue and Sermon. Yeah. Yeah. Or there's that Geraldo Rivera movie famous. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Or didn't. If he, he, opened, he opened up the safe and then dropped it in. Oops. Oops. You're so sure that you're so. You made a career out of it, though. I had to laugh. Uh, you know, we, when I met you, we um, were in a, a group. And I had met you a couple of times, but we never really talked. And then uh, started talking, and uh, I asked her what she did. She said, I'm an attorney. She said, I'm a law professor. She said, I'm an adult man. I said, I got a guy. My brother's uh, father in law is the guy in, is a, I'm an adult man guy. And you look at me like, who is this? Yeah, sure he is. And I said, who is this guy? And I said, uh, Robert Wiss. And he said, he is. <laughs> So, t so tell a little bit about that, it. that was an amazing connection, uh, an instant, instantaneous connection. That's how we got it. Yeah. Because I grew up, uh, you know, Bob Wiss is my dad's part, my part. Foreign Wiss and Schultz. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Bob Wiss was just a genius man. He really was. was. He was uh, the so father in law of the brother. Yeah, and so you, and, you know, uh, I. He was a great guy, and every time I met him, such a down-to-earth man, yeah. he came uh, uh, to the uh, military court of appeals. Yes. Yeah, so That's it's Admiral of the Navy. Yeah, he always, he was uh, in the Naval Reserve, yeah. and, and my father-in-law was the head of the Naval Reserve. Oh, really? You know, yeah. I'm 50, right? Uh, so they were, my father-in-law and Bob Wiss were very good close friends to the Navy. Out together for me in the Navy days. So that's a connection I would make. Yeah, it was, it was, that was remarkable. Yeah, they, they, were, they were great. And, but I mean, growing up, your sister in law uh, was over in our house with a damn mom, you know, all the time we had a Of course, I admired Bob because my dad always said, most brilliant, most brilliant. I just thought it was so funny because I knew you were John, but I, and I had I known you were John Foreign, I would have known. Yeah, <laughs> but I didn't. Right. So I was like, and then the connection, like, wow, quite a connection. <laughs> yeah, love Bob. Bob's just a great guy. One of the best storytellers and joke tellers ever. Yeah, he was. He, he was really funny. Talk about dad jokes. The guy knew all his dad jokes. He knew them all. He really did. He did. <laughs> so I thought that was a nice. I, I like that story. I told yeah. the story a lot. Because yeah. Did you realize we're just like, yeah, who is this guy? 
It's like, oh, I, you're right, he is. If you, re, if you read many of the old decisions that come in from the case law, uh, you'll see, you'll see Bob Wilson's name on uh, uh, many of them. He, he, my dad would try the cases and get the verdicts, and then the state would appeal, and Bob would come in and handle the appeal. That's amazing. Which is why I put him on the court. Yeah. Well, they would do the as you know, you have to have a community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, here's another question that I'd like to ask a friend. Um, what is the prince of the thing? Uh I, I think I really do think that uh, we have to be willing to step into your shoes as you to really see the case from their perspective, um, to understand what it means to them, you know, what this property means, what this business means, and you really have to be willing to do 100% you know, to, to give them the justice. And you gotta work with the law, and uh, you gotta be the best people in, and you gotta be solid in the case, because ultimately, if you gotta take it to trial, you really have to have the best team. Some theory of the case. I do think it's good. You really have to get the numbers with the work on it. You build every case that you're going to try. Because it's really about the evidence of the market. And what is the highest and best use of the property? What is the market? And you know, very often the, uh, you know, the offers that they have to receive from the community buyer are based on appraisal. Um, but they're not always based on the highest and best use of the property, and they're not always based on the legal markets and so that they reflect on the value of the property. So, um, yeah, it's really a lot of if you had to do it over again, would you be able to do it I think, uh, yeah, I, I'm feeling um, the problem is getting all about the uh, And, so, and I, I haven't been in as long as you have. But, you know, I, I, um, I actually treasure it, you know, for me. You know, it's a, uh, uh, it's an honor to represent people. Um, I assume you agree with that. Absolutely. I, I've met some wonderful people, wonderful people over the course of my career. They have really helped them. Uh, they are, you know, in their own view, protect their assets. Uh, it's, it's very important. So, you know, I, 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 I had one, I'll share one story with you. Uh, we were very involved, our friend Mark, Stephen and I were all very involved in the repair and modernization, the expansion of the bank, the field back in uh, 2005, 2004, 2005, and uh, we represented probably hundreds of properties that were acquired by the city by the repair and modernization program. Uh, and uh, I got involved with a huge element that was being acquired by 175 families living in this hall. And uh, I went out there, got a house, I went out there and married a few of these people. And uh, one thing led to another, and I ended up I think when we finished it, we had about 125 And I, I, I worked seven days a week for that. We would bring the uh, we'd bring the group in on Sundays and uh, we'd have a big PowerPoint presentation to explain what was happening. And my paralegal would come with me to see that and uh, I'm not too technical, so I was kind of lying. I heard this set up. It wasn't like this podcast. It was in my law library. 
So I have two son-in-laws now that were lawyers, one Captain uh, Warren Martinez, Brooklyn, and uh, Prince Hunter. Yes, one piece of um, Brooklyn and the legal process of Southwest and the law. So, uh, you know, we, we got, we got a... They got, got, they got some great kids to push their way. Yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, I, I, I used to my, I used to make my, to my sons, both my sons go to law school. I didn't, I don't think I encouraged them. I never said, you know, you should go to law school. I didn't discourage them. But I, but, uh, you know, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a uh, noble profession. I think, I think, I think, I think for, for myself, I, I mean, I wanted to find, uh, I wanted to start my own practice because I really wanted to. I really want to have a language between me and my And I, I enjoyed going out and you know, developing a part of this myself with my partner. That, that can be a sales thing. You guys can get our number of years. Yeah, we, Mark and I pushing 30 years, and Stephen probably pushing 25. Yeah, yeah, amazing sometimes to do all of them. I, I, I just saw the first thing that comes out of my head and I was like, I don't know if that's true. How does that happen? I don't know how that happens. It's amazing. Yeah. But I'm quite sure. So I want to thank you so much for joining us. I, it was just what I thought it would be. I'm so happy that you, you finally joined us. We'll have to, thank you. have to have you back because uh, I'm going to have to drag out some of those stories that you have because I know you have some great stories. Uh, but I appreciate you taking the time. I'd love to get my partners on. I'd love yeah. to have them. Uh, I, I, I really like spending time with attorneys and asking them you know, why, they're, why they became an attorney, what, what made them, you know, all this stuff. Take those stories. Don't tell them what I asked them. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask them too. I love you. But I'd love to have them. So I, I, appreciate, I appreciate the connection. Well, um, thanks for being thanks for my I told you you'd have fun. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a little nervous. Well, anytime we, when, whenever we get together, John, uh, we just, 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 the, the, the conversation goes fun. And, oh, yeah. And I, I'm so happy that, that, that you're here and I've uh, spent, spent some time with you. So thanks, thanks again. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.
Well, thanks so much. Uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have some of these partners on. <laughs> we'll make that happen. Well, thanks so much for joining us here today. Uh, it is the uh, the law library at the Trust Radio Network. So thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.